after discussing the absolutely legendary Goldfinger. Next up in our road to No Time to Die, we got the 1965 Bond film Thunderball. Welcome to Silver Screen Talk. My name is Luke LaPointe. I started this channel because movies are a big part of my life and I want to talk about them with people who care about them as much as I do. With that, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Most importantly, as we were talking about movies, I want to hear you down in that comment section. If you are a Bond fan, have you seen Thunderball? If you're going to see No Time to Die, are you going to see Thunderball? What do you think about the movie? And also, what do you think about my channel? What videos do you want me to be doing? Remember, I want to be hearing from you guys as much as I can. If you know how to leave a comment, which I know you do, I know you know how to type, make sure you do. And let's get into it. After Goldfinger, Eon Productions dropped Thunderball in 1965. And I really enjoyed this film. It's not as great as Goldfinger from Russia with Love, Dr. No. But it's still great. It's still a really good movie. I think it's still a top tier Bond film. And I think it's a much more ambitious film than the previous ones. It feels larger in scale. And it also really delves into this world more, this Bond world, especially on the side of our antagonist. It, an original film with an original premise, especially for the time, that brings us more into this world of Spectre. And let's just see what really is the big bad in, in the entire Bond anthology, the entire Bond series. And I believe it really starts to connect everything in terms of Spectre and Blofeld and just the, what they are to Bond. I do think we have some pretty good antagonists in this film. I really do love Largo as a villain. I know he doesn't get as much you know, credit as some others. He's a little more run-of-the-mill, but I think he serves his purpose. He doesn't get his moments where he absolutely shines like other antagonists do, but he does very well in the scenes he is in. And what I think he does do is butter us up really well for Blofeld in future movies. He is the number two in Spectre. He's not the number one. He's not the big bad. He doesn't have to shine. He does what he needs to do. Now, on the other hand, Fiona, Vol Fiona Volpe, I think she's a top-tier antagonist. She's a great femme fatale. And not only is she a top-tier antagonist, she's also a top-tier Bond girl. She's badass. She's intelligent. And she takes Bond to the end of his rope. She really, really works him. And she is a multi-tiered female villain who can do a lot, which is always fun to see. Because especially back in that time, female antagonists tend to be more one-dimensional. In this movie, we also have some really good locations that are a lot of fun and beautiful, especially Nassau. I always love the scenes on Nassau. You get a really good performance from Connery. Not a top-tier performance from Connery. I think this is when he starts to transition. He starts to tire out a little bit. As Indiana Jones says, The years, right? It's the mileage. But I still think he puts in a really good performance. He always has that nice suaveness as Bond. He's always badass. He's always really cool. And so it is a really good performance. Any performance from Connery is a good performance. You get to see a little more sneaking around in actual spy work, which I always love from spy movies. They tend to lean more into action, which I do like, but I do also like to see the espionage and the actual spy work being done. There is some good action too. However, I feel like there are a lot of underwater scenes, especially the underwater scenes, and it can start to feel super repetitive at the end. The action especially starts to feel super repetitive at the end. I think the final battle is too long, and it really does drag at times. They really could have cut 10 to 15 minutes from this film. This film is about two plus hours. It really could have been like an hour 50. I think they could have cut some from the film, and... Honestly, probably would have been a lot better. It probably would have been not just a really good or a great uh, Bond movie, but a legendary Bond movie, in my opinion. Um, I think Domino is not a top-tier Bond girl. I think she's really great. I think she's a great fighter, but I don't think it's a top-tier performance. Like, Claudine uh, Auger is really good, but I think sometimes she can be a little wooden. I think sometimes her performance can feel a little stale. Domino as a character is very intriguing, and I do like her, but I think the performance is not up to par compared to some of the other Bond girls, especially coming off that incredible performance of Honor Blackman as Pussy Galore, top tier Bond girl. I also think that this movie starts to lean into the campiness a little more. You know, it's using jetpacks, a lot of campy underwater scenes. 
you know, and this is kind of the trajectory of the Bond series for a long time, especially under the Roger Moore era. You know, they are enjoyable. They are still really enjoyable. But I do like my Bond films to be a little more down to earth. You know, those are my more favorite Bond films. But still, this is a great Bond film. And before I get into my score, if you like this and want to see my other Bond reviews, especially keep on track for The Road to No Time to Die, click up above to be taken to that place re playlist where you can see my other reviews. Now, to get into this score, using my brain score, thinking as a critic, well, it is still a great movie, but it does have its faults. I'm going to give it an 81%. And as a Bond fan, using my heart score as a movie fan, I still do really love this movie. I love every Connery Bond film, so I'm going to give this a 90% because I still love to rewatch this movie as campy as it is, as repetitive as it is. I still love rewatching this movie, and that's a review. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to hear more stuff about my Bond movies, make sure to click up above to be taking that playlist. Keep on that road to no time to die because that is going to be an amazing movie. Thank you so much and keep on loving movies as much as I do.